Great. So welcome, welcome everybody here. Hope you're all having uh, as much fun as I've been having today. It's, a, it's been a, such a fantastic day to, to meet with everyone, to have dialogue around what, what they need SMART to do and, and, and the plans for the future. I think we're all clear SMART has made a very big mistake, which is take 14 years to do an event like this. Um, but it's so good we're here to, to, today and we're looking forward to many events like this in the future. I'm really excited today because we're going to be, be taking you through some, some of the new features that are coming in Smart 8. Um, the, the Refractions, Jeff from Refractions and Justin from CyberTracker will be presenting. Uh, to kick things off, uh, I'm pleased to welcome my friend and colleague, uh, James Simfukwe, who is going to come and remind people about some of the features we introduced with Smart 7 and also give you a, a taste of some features that we're going to be releasing two, two weeks from now with the final release of Smart 7. So with that, can I have you all welcome James. Thanks, Jonathan. OK, um, I, feel, I think before we can appreciate uh, where we are right now with Smart, it is a good idea to look back at where we're coming from. So I have uh, on the slideshow a snapshot of Smart uh, 6.3. And we can agree that uh, the jump from Smart 6 to Smart 7 came with a lot of functionalities, right? Uh, including a new user interface, uh, which makes it a bit more accessible for us to use. Uh, it included in, uh, data types for the data model. Uh, in this version, we also added uh, multi-select lists. And we added a post plugin that integrates with Pose AI for data analysis and prediction. Um, we also added some attachments to the queries and improved our reporting. And currently, we are sitting at Smart 757. And in Smart 757, we have done a lot of uh, improvement in data integration. So we have looked at uh, making, fixing errors with the APIs so that our, our Smart is more accessible through our Earth Ranger and other uh, platforms. We also enhanced Smart Connect functionality in this, we added uh, a customization in the APIs where we allow users to um, filter uh, waypoints and tracks by uh, several ide uh, identifiers, right? And then we also expanded the data export uh, support functionalities. So we included uh, features like exporting uh, reports and into much like more file, uh, file extensions and not just CSV. So we also have uh, XML. And in the general sense, we increased customization and improved reporting and stability. So I think we've heard a lot that we are moving forward to Smart 8. And currently, we, through the feedback we've gotten from uh, our community, we have done a few fixes. And we will be releasing a, at the end of this month, Smart 757. And as you can see, this is the snapshot of Smart 7. And we can agree, not just because of the lovely map of Zambia over there, that it actually looks much easier to use. So in the current fix, we have translation enhancements. We're including Chinese, Hindi, and other improvements to the existing translations in Smart. We have improved image handling. Uh, so. Uh, for people who use uh, iPhone, when, you, when you're using Smart Mobile, the uh, file extension is in JPEG, right? But if you want to import uh, an image into uh, Smart, uh, iPhone has a very weird format that is not supported at the moment. So we have fixed this ability, and now we are able to view images uh, in Smart 7 that are coming from iPhone. We have also improved uh, data management. So we got some feedback from some of our users uh, saying when they're running their reports, their data mod, the, the data structure did not fit the way it appeared in the data model. So we have fixed those things. And we have also improved performance with Smart Connect. So there is definitely going to be a lot of uh, faster performance in using Smart Connect. We also did a lot of other additional fixes, which we'll share in release notes once we have uh, released Smart 758. Yes, and with that cue, I'm going to introduce my friend Jeff Lonsbury. Thank you.
Thank you, James. Hopefully I can speak loud enough. You can all hear me. Not a public speaker by trade, by any stretch of the imagination. Um, but yes, I'm Jeff Lonsbury. I work with uh, Refractions Research. Uh, we've been developing Smart for 12 or 13 years now, I believe. Uh, so I'm here to talk to you about some of the new features in Smart 8 uh, that we're all excited about, and I hope you will be too. Um, so I'll just jump right into it here. The, <clears throat> the first one is conflict resolution. So if you guys are having troubles with your coworkers or your spouse, uh, we cannot help with that. Smart is not designed for that. This kind of conflict, conflict resolution is based on the Smart Connect system. So many of you probably use Smart Connect, and you know that if people are making changes at the same time uh, at different desktop sites, they can send those up to the server and they get confused. The server doesn't know which one is the correct one to take, right? So, sorry, the full public speaking fear happening right now. That's all right. Um, so we've decided that we wanted to make new features to let you uh, recover from these conflicts. Uh, in Smart 7, you need to basically re-download the whole conservation area uh, from the server again if, if the system gets confused and doesn't really know which is the, the correct change to keep. Um, and that was, a, that was a problem for a number of people. So what we're going to do is uh, give you some options to automatically recover from that situation and hopefully get you right back on track and collecting more data, all that sort of thing. And since I'm so confident about public speaking and I like to live on the edge, we're going to do a live demo right now. So what I have set up here is two versions of smart software that would be mimicking, not that one, this one on the left here and this other, uh, no, not that one still. This one. So we have two systems. So this is not what you should do. You should never really run Smart in multiple instances. I'm just doing it for this demo. Uh, but it's mimicking basically two different sites. Um, this one on the left, we're going to say, is the, the main site. Um, and what I've got set up here is that they've collected some patrols. You'll see that there's patrols eight, number eight and nine here on the left hand, Smart. And in Smart on the right hand side, this is somebody at a different site. They don't have those patrols yet because they haven't been synchronized and working through Smart Connect yet. So the other thing that I have set up is that they've, both of these have made edits to the same thing. Uh, so I've purposely set up a conflict here. Miscommunication or something that causes this, whatever happens at the various sites. But So what I would do now is, let's say this one on the Smart Connect on the right here is going to sync their changes up to the server. And hopefully we've got the internet all working. This is going to work well. Should be pretty quick. I think that's good. And then so this other site on the left now, like I say, they've been collecting patrols all day. They haven't synced their changes yet. And they're going to try to sync them now. And probably, hopefully, come across a problem because those other people made some changes at the same time. All right, so you don't usually want to see the screen, but for me, I like to see it. Uh, so this is what I'm talking about in terms of a conflict. And like I said, in Smart 7, you'd have to re-download the CA, uh, and that can be a big problem. In a lot of sites, uh, you don't have great internet. The, the CA can be very large. Uh, that's the other thing I should mention. Uh, this CA, I've set, up, I've set it up with a bunch of uh, attachments and everything else. There's, I think it's maybe 500 megabytes. Um, so if we're going to fix this, we don't want to have to wait for that whole 500 megabyte uh, system to download again. So these are the, basically the new options that I'm going to show you right now. Um, so the main thing we want to work, for, work on is to make it easy, to make it faster, and to be able to save stuff like those patrols that you've been working on all day without a lot of manual work uh, to get around this problem. So this first option at the top, this is the speed option. This is going to try to download as little as possible and only fix the conflict problems and not re-download all sorts of other things that haven't changed, haven't been uh, modified at all. Yes, sir? Is there a way to increase the size of the um, Probably not. <laughs> Can I do that? I don't think so. 
<laughs> yeah, basically the top one is saying download modifications only. Um, so that's that's why I'm saying it's uh, it's only going to try to fix the things that are that are broken and not re-download the whole thing. Uh, the second option is basically the slower option. If the first option doesn't work for some for whatever reason, the second option is the same similar thing to what you do in Smart Seven, except now it can be automated. You just tick this button, press OK, and then go ahead. And then finally, at the bottom here, we're going to say we want to try to retain any data that I've created uh, throughout the day before I or the week or the month or however long it's been since I synchronized. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that and we'll start getting the processing going. Hopefully, like I say, this takes 45 seconds or something and not 500 megabytes on a bad internet connection might be, you know, a couple hours of your day or something. So hopefully we've reduced these problems to being a very quick response instead of uh, a long problem to solve. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, we thought there, there might be cases where there was a miscommunication and you had two sites were both control adding patrols, so you might not want to duplicate them. So, but by default, probably is a, a better option. Uh, so there we go. It's done and restarted. So we have to log back in. Uh, but basically, it's fixed the problem and. When I log back in, you'll see that the patrols are still there and the conflict is solved. So, hopefully, for any of you that have experienced this problem in Smart 7, this is a, a much better way to do it. And if I have some luck, it actually worked and it's good. So you can see that the patrols are here, and now we should be able to connect and sync up all those changes. So that's pretty much the conflict resolution. Uh, move on to the next feature. Uh, we have this idea of geometry attributes that people have been asking for. Um, so right now you go out and you take an observation. It automatically detects you know, where you're standing when you press the new observation button keeps that point in the system, um, but there was no way to, to specify or measure uh, a larger space. Like, uh, for example, the fire is burning in this area or it has burned in this area. You might want to map out a rough idea or actually walk around the full thing to get an exact uh, location of where things were. Uh, so that's what we've added, these new uh, attributes that you can put into your data model that have a uh, polygon or a line type to them. Um, so I will show you just a quick few things. Um, Justin has some other uh, videos and demos to show you how to create those things, but I'll just show you quickly uh, what, they can, what you can do with them. Um, yeah, so just in your standard data model, in this one I've created a few uh, example areas or example types that have um, polygon uh, attributes in them here. So you can see this estimated burned area. You might want to see that there's been a fire in an area and draw the polygon of the exact uh, location of the fire. You might come across the legal fence or something and you might want to draw or walk along the fence line and map that out perfectly in your system. Uh, so you can do that. <clears throat> so once you get that in a patrol, I have an example patrol here. Um, you can see that I've mapped out a fire area here just right next to the hotel. Hopefully this is just fake data and there's not an actual fire over there, but uh, you can see you can turn these layers on and off. There's a fence location layer, a field location. Um, you can turn these on and off and, and save them. Um, you can also, where is it? Go in and actually edit the polygon. Um, if you just took a rough, uh, a rough measurement in the field of where your polygon was, you can come back when you're back in the office. You can put some more detail into it uh, and do some edits to it here. So if I find my fire polygon, I could change it a little bit here. Oops. Change the points around. You get the point. You get some uh, extra edits to it. 
the other things you can do, uh, you can run queries. Uh, so I have a few queries here that involve the, the polygons that we've built. Um, so this is a query that just shows all my fence, fire, and land clearing activities, all of which have uh, a polygon associated with them. So you see you get a bunch of results. You can look at the, the map of that. And if I zoom in to the right spots here, you can see various things that I've created, just a bunch of little fire polygons and other areas that have been uh, mapped out. And this is this, these are the same layers as you're used to in Smart. You can export them to a shapefile, um, use them in your other GIS systems if you want to do further analysis. Um, you can also do uh, a summary of the area. So if you see down here, you can calcu calculate the area of the polygon and summarize them. I've got one here showing the average or the, the total uh, square kilometers of burned uh, area that we've observed per day. And the other thing you can do, you can filter these things as well on the area. So if I go to the estimated burned area, add that as a value. Oh, sorry, on this one, I want to do that. Go to the estimated burned area, and I can say I only want to deal with the larger fires. So I'm going to say greater than five square kilometers. And instead of getting all of these 16 results, we should probably get less than, well, 50. <laughs> we could say 50 kilometers. Um, yeah, so that's basically some of the things you can do with the polygons once you've mapped them. Yes, sir? Oh, I see. If you have two polygons that overlap, uh, not at this time. You'd have to export that to a shapefile or something and then use QGIS or ARC, ARC something to do that at the time, at, at this moment. Yep. Uh, when you export the data and it has polygons, it's, uh, it's a shapefile, I guess? Uh, you can choose a shapefile, yeah. There's a few options, but yeah, that would be a typical one. And, cause, yeah. and the shapefile will have uh, the, as columns the, the different attributes. It would have area, perimeter, and an ID, I think, something like that, yeah. That and the patrol information as well, I guess. Um, like the category that it's a fire and a few of the other attributes, I believe, that you collected at the same time for that observation, yeah. Thanks. Okay, I'm gonna keep moving on here because I've probably taken up more than my allotted time. Um, another big feature that we've added in Smart 8 is uh, automated mobile data processing. So in Smart 7, uh, you need to go through the process of downloading the data, um, doing it on the desktop, and then resyncing it up to the server. And it's just a little bit, uh, manual steps. Um, so I also have another live demo here because I just love them so much. If I, where is it? If I show you my very, very, very simple dashboard that I have here, I refresh this, I have, uh, oh, I'm logged out, so I'll go back in. My dashboard, dashboard is just showing the number of patrols. On the left side, it's the patrols for the whole year, and the, the right side is just in the last 24 hours. Uh, so I have a, a very simple patrol that I set up on my phone. Um, I'm just going to hit the start button now, and that should basically create a new patrol in the server and tell you that we're, um, somebody started a new patrol. They don't have to finish it. Um, we can't see the end date of the patrol, but basically we're getting real-time data. So we just upped our patrol count by one, and it took, whatever, 10 seconds or something. Um, so hopefully that's a good feature that you guys will have. I know it's a, not a very exciting demo. Um, what else do I need to talk about? Uh, oh, I was going to say the fact that I can refresh this is because I'm looking at it on Smart Connect. If you're on a desktop system, you still do have to synchronize down, of course. The data is processed on the server and left in the server. Um, but you can automate that as well to say, you know, check for data every 10 minutes or something if you, if you want to do that. I'll go back to the slides here, and I'm just about done. 
So those are the major things. Uh, lots of other little changes, of course, in Smart 8. Lots of, lots of small, interesting things. Um, I was going to point out the software size itself has gotten a lot smaller. We were able to sort of reset once we get to, to new, a new big version change. So if you've ever had problems sending people the software or downloading it, taking a long time, it was almost a gigabyte now. I think more than a gigabyte in Smart 7, the late ones, latest ones. So back down to uh, reasonable numbers. And there's some nice icons uh, that we've added in a few places. Lots of little things like that. So um, I think I will leave it at that and pass it over to Justin for some smart mobile stuff. Yeah, the video is just okay. Great. One, two, there. Okay. Uh, thanks, Jeff. I, I'm Justin. I was the cyber tracker guy, and now I'm the smart mobile guy, evidently. So uh, I just run us through the new features for Smart Mobile 8. Um, they're kind of cool and visually very interesting. So the, the Jeff mentioned the uh, line and polygon features. This is just a little shot of what it would be like to enter a line on the map. Uh, polygon as well. I'm kind of racing through these a little bit because I have a demo video that I'll talk through that it makes it a little bit easier to understand them. Um, and then there's, oh, I don't need to go for that one. There's the history feature. I'll get there in a minute. Okay, so the screen here is the uh, Smart 8 on the left, and we have the desktop simulator on the right. Um, to start with, when you want to create a line or polygon, you first add an attribute. And I'll just, if you open the data model, hopefully it's something you can see there, add an attribute. And um, I'll create a new attribute. And you can see you can enter polygon and line. There are two new options there. So I'll just select polygon. This is under the fire section, so I'll say burn area and uh, finish safe and whatnot. And then you go to field data, smart mobile, packages, and you export the package to smart mobile. OK, great. Now that that's saved, we'll go ahead um, and bring it up. Note the UI is a little bit different for those of you who are familiar with smart mobile. We no longer have a separate section for connect. You now click the plus button over here um, to add the projects. So I click plus, and then smart desktop. And there we have our project, it just came up. So um, I won't go through the patrol section, I'll just do, as, do this as an independent incident, but of course there's no problem running um, points and polygons or lines and polygons in patrols, it works just as well. So select fire, note the new attribute here, burn area. And uh, this is what, what entering uh, a polygon looks like. Now, there are three different ways. You can tap, you can use the GPS or auto GPS. I'll go through each of those separately. There are three different ways to enter lines and polygons um, in the field. This method is just tap, where you just basically, you're by hand, you're sketching it out one, one at a time. There's also a button called remove, so you can delete the last point unless you, in case you get it wrong and then confirm. You can see it calculates the area as well. There's a little visualization. So now I'll use the second method. Um, by the way, you can mix the methods, and I'll show, show you that in a minute. But this time we're going to use GPS. Now you see there's this little add point button. And what that's going to do is every time you add a particular point, say you're walking around an area, but you want to be quite precise about the points you add, you just click add point whenever um, you find a point you want to add, and it takes the current GPS location. Um, I'm just going to, in this case, add uh, a third point using tap, because it's all simulated. Um, so that would be the second method of entering polygons. And then the third method is one where you're walking around an area, and you just want it to record as you walk. And that's called auto GPS. And so you can see as the things going, it's just constantly adding points um, at every moment. And uh, I think I do the same thing here where I, I 
pause it and I add an extra point just to um, just to show that you can uh, mix methods again. Cool. Okay, then it's the usual save. And then we'll export. In this case, I'm just exporting to a file so that we can import it immediately onto the desktop. So I'll import the file. This is not the normal procedure, of course. Normally it would go through connect or something more automatic, but this is just for this demo. So there you go, it's, uh, it's imported the, um, the incident that we just created. You can see there are the three uh, fire observation bits and um, you can see now I'm gonna zoom in on the map and then there are the three polygons that we've just created. So that's how uh, one can add lines and polygons in the field. Um, the next feature I wanted to talk about is the uh, it's persistent data. We're still working a bit on the naming, but it's um, the idea is that in the normal case, all the data leaves the device the moment it's uploaded, and this is a feature that allows you to retain data on the device. So, I mean, in a, in a way, you own the data when you collect it, and it's also nice for referencing the past uh, events and things like that. So, uh, on the, the Leftmost uh, is, the, is the view. You can see we have uh, two different projects. We're just grouped by project right now. One patrol here, another patrol down there. And you can filter and you can group. Um, but I'll show you the, that in a, in, a, uh, in a video now. Um, there's one other quick feature here. You, you notice, uh, oh, I should just go back here. So you notice there's a red dot just at the top left of patrol. That indicates that this is a, a running patrol. And um, this is an interesting feature because it, uh, it confuses the system if you start two patrols from the same device in a sort of overlapping way. So that's a, a new thing. You can see as I go to the uh, Fire Ranger model, I say start, it says, well, it says patrol already started, so we have a little bit of overlap there. Then we can go, there's a new option here called data archive. You can see we can activate archive, we can also back up, restore, and reset the archive. And you get this new button on the toolbar called data, and then this shows you the, uh, the historical data that you have captured. Um, in this case, you can see there are two projects and we have two patrols. Um, and there are two buttons on the top here. One is, is grouping, the other is filter. For filter, we can sort by archived or current, and then there's date range, and you can also do a uh, search text, so plain text filter. I'll show that in a minute. So, okay, here, fence. So you can see, because I typed fence, there was only one fence match, and it showed up. Uh, and the group by feature just lets you uh, group things to make it a little bit easier to work with. Right now it's grouped by project, but you can also group by um, day or whatever, time, month, whatever. Um, in this case, it's grouped by day. So that's the, the gist of that. Uh, let's see. Oh, uh, they're also visible. The, the filtering also works perfectly on the map in the same exact way. So in this case, you can see we have all the observations. We can filter down to uh, just the current project data, so the live data. You can see there we've, we're on patrol basically here. Um, and similarly, we can go and, and uh, search all data again, but just for, um, I think I did the fence test again. There you go, there's the fence. And um, yeah, you can go and, uh, and see the whole data from there. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's mostly the, the big changes. I think there are going to be a bunch of little cosmetic ones uh, around the side, and of course lots of stuff under the covers that's going to make it better in every way. But uh, yeah, first, first on the left we also have the, I wanted to 
uh, emphasize this, we have that big plus button. So you have a bit of a different view um, of the main screen. Then again, the, there'll be more things coming in terms of how to make sure people end patrols or make it easier to remember to end patrols for data collection. And um, then of course, the, the, uh, the different ways in which you can collect lines and polygons. Okay, thank you so much. Sorry, before you leave, I've got a question. Sure. Uh, on the lines and polygons, can you restrict a configurable model to only use the tap or the auto GPS or something, and not to give them options whilst in the field? Um, I think that's very consistent with the way, yeah, so I should say these features are in the fine tuning stage. That sounds like a very good idea. Um, typically, we do want the admin to completely customize the data capture on the device. So yeah, we'll do that. Anything else? Yep. Can we add attributes to the polygons? I mean, can, can we actually fill, uh, provide information besides drawing the polygon in a smart mobile? Um, I mean, the metadata for the polygon would be the observation itself, right? So whatever you, whatever the metadata you had with SIG for the fire, for example, would be part of that polygon itself. Yeah. Thanks. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Justin, and thanks, Jeff. Um, I don't know if you know this, but when you're a developer and you're presenting new, new tools to people, you kind of feel like a kid on your, your first day. You don't know whether people are going to be happy and like you or you're going to be left on your own. So I just want to give them all a, a round of applause again, because that's <laughs> so cool. So that sort of brings to a close this session. Just want to flag that, that while we're getting ready to, to, to release Smart 758, as, as, as James showed, while we're building and finalizing Smart 8 and testing that, we're also thinking heavily about the future. Uh, we were really excited over the last year to launch our, our, our work with Gundy, integrating 100 different sensors. And we've really only just begun on our work with integrating different tools with, with Smart. Um, one project that we're really excited about and that we had an incredible focus group on this morning was our work on dashboarding and advanced analysis that won't be in Smart. Uh, eight, but it will, will follow fairly quickly where we're, we're, we're looking at building a whole new tool that will allow us to do really, really advanced analysis and advanced dashboarding of our data. And as we f begin finishing out that work, we, we also have a project we're calling SmartX. SmartX is the next generation of Smart. We're beginning to think about what we want to build with the next generation. How do, we, how do we take the set software to the next level? So if you have any ideas, any, 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 anything you wish for or dream for about Smart, don't be shy. Raise it with Jeff. Raise it with Justin. Raise it with myself. Raise, raise it with James. Raise it with anyone from the Smart Partnership. We're here to meet your needs. We're here to provide a solution for you. Uh, and we will continue to build and enhance the software. So please you know, be excited about uh, the, the, the stuff that's being released in a couple of weeks with 758. Look forward to, to 8 but also be inspired about SmartX and tell us what you need, what your dreams are, and we will fulfill them. Thank you all. <laughs>